All right, the most common type of uh, way that we're going to terminate a rigid tube is to end it in a flare. And most of those flares are going to get a little backup nut and then a B nut across the top of them. To make that flare, we're going to have to use some different flare tools. And I've got a couple of different common types of flare tools. Okay, I've got the slightly more automatic style flare tool. Okay, I believe Parker makes this one, and I think you can buy it from Aircraft Tool, if I remember correctly, as well as a whole lot of other places. And then I've got the uh, slightly more common style of single flare tool, and this one actually is very similar to what you'd see a plumber use when he's working on your house. Speaking of a plumber working on your house, you do need to know that an aviation flare is different than a house flare. A house flare is at 45 degrees, and an aviation flare is at 37 degrees. Let me show you a close-up of the two different tools to, so you can see the difference. Okay, If you take a look at this, this is the, the household style flare tool and you can see it forms a 90 degree angle with the cone, 45 degrees on each side. The cone is also completely smooth. Some aviation flare tools have that smooth cone, but if you look at the aviation flare tool, you'll see that that aviation flare tool has a sharper angle. It's only bent out to 37 degrees. That means it's a little less likely to actually damage our soft aluminum tubing or our hard aluminum tubing when we put that 37 degree flare into there. Also, the aviation style flare, okay, the cone has little shoulders on it, and those little shoulders are much better at forming and wiping the edge into that shaped flare that we're going to need without tearing it. So we'll go ahead and take a look at both of these in action. Let's show the automotive style or, or the housing style flare tool first. Okay, to properly flare, what you'll need to do is first open up the tool and then locate the proper set of dies and insert the flare tool to, or insert the, the tube to the proper depth. And that proper depth is going to be just a little bit above the edge. Okay, each one is a little different and you kind of get an idea for that. We're going to tighten everything up and that's going to hold the tube firmly inside the dies. Once we get this tight, and it looks like it failed rather than tightening, so give me another try here. Okay, I am not a fan of this type of tool. Maybe this is why. Okay, let's try again. Okay, reinsert it to the proper depth, hold it, tighten it, and we should be ready to flare. Now we use the proper end. We take that, put it over the top of the tool, back it up, until we can take this and lock it off to the side. Okay, now we begin the flare process and hopefully you can see properly in here. And another reason why I'm not a fan of this tool, this one is defective. Let's try again. Okay, lock the flare tool in position and now if you get a good close look you can see that cone is going to begin to work its way down and as I work it down with the thread, it's wiping out the side of that and making a nice flare. Do not over tighten on these flares as you can uh, cause all kinds of problems and wipe that uh, much too thin. Here's a properly formed flare and I can go ahead and loosen up my tool, break the dies apart, and there's my proper flare. Now, to check and make sure that my flare is proper, I can make sure that the bee nut goes over the top of the flare. Okay, and you can see that I've slightly over wiped this particular flare. Uh, it went in, but it took a little bit of, of work. So this flare, this flare is acceptable, but it's not stellar. Okay, and you would want the backup sleeve on the bee nut as well. Now, I promised to show you a little bit more about that cutting tool, and this is a great place to show you what that cutting tool is. Suppose you've made a mistake flaring your tube, and you want to reflare your tube. If you look at the cutting tool, you'll see that the tube cutter has two little notches inside the rollers. Those are designed so that they can go right onto the edge of the flare, and I can cut the edge of this flare right off, really close to the end. There we go, you can see the cut happening again. This time I'm not in as uh, much of a demo mode, so it doesn't take near as long to cut it. We'll go ahead and re-ream the tube. And once again, it is important before you flare a tube that you have a proper 
clean cut because any little unevenness becomes a stress crack that will tend to show up. Now, the more difficult or the more complex tool. This particular tool has a pair of jaws and you can set it to whatever size tool you need and we're using 3 8 so we're going to set it to 3 8 Okay, both of the 3 8 drives are set in position. We're going to slide the tube in and one of the things I like about this tool, it's a little hard to see, but there is actually a little arm that shows me how deep to slide the tube in. And that little arm is attached to the locking mechanism. It'll swing back out of the way as soon as we're done. I set the tube up to the arm, hold the dies in place, bring the lock down, which pulls the arm out of the way, and lock the tube into position. Okay, it's entirely contained in position now. Now we flare it just like we would flare the other, uh, with the other style. Okay, once again, if we just haul away on this thing, we're going to so over flare this tube that you're never going to be able to fit it into the B-nut. Okay, but that's not a problem if you just lightly flare it and as soon as you feel it reach the bottom, you stop. Once again, lift this out of the way and we have our beautifully flared um, connection. And that is uh, good and ready to use. So, that are, there's the two style of flare tools that we were looking at and you'll need to practice both of those.